Hello basketball coaches and basketball players. My name is Alan from Al's Basketball Training and today I'm going to talk to you about how you can win more games. Well, if you've got a short basketball team. So I've coached many different teams, some that are taller and some that are shorter. Now the shorter teams, some of the things that you're going to have issues with. Number one, you can have issues playing against taller basketball teams but only when it comes to the low post on offense and defense and when it comes to rebounding. When it comes to the perimeter game, you should have the advantage and you should use that advantage very well. And I'm going to explain to you how you're going to be able to do that today. Next, there's going to be some strengths on coaching a shorter basketball team. And that is, generally speaking, a shorter basketball team is going to be more athletic. So, if you've got some fantastic basketball players and they're very slow and they're not moving and they're shorter but you're going to be running a short basketball team you better pick those skillful players but have the ability to pick the most athletic players in your tryout as well so going from there being a more athletic team being a shorter team there's some advantages advantages to that and that is the full court and what you need to do is full court press the other team. You need to be able to teach your team how to play tight defense. You don't want to be giving up any inches to the opposing offensive player. You want to be right on them. And you want to be in your defensive stance. You do not want them to be, you don't want to give them enough room to dribble. That is going to be number one. You are going to be picking up a lot of fouls by playing defense like that. So I suggest that you pick a 12 to 14 player team. Now, you may be saying, well, what happens to those players who don't get playing time? Well, guess what? Now there's competition. If that player over there is player number seven and he's not working, he's not working his butt off in practice and he's not working his butt off in games, guess what? Player number 14 or player number 12 is going to be taking his spot. I'm kind of tired. When I was coaching basketball and when I coach basketball, I'm, I, I've kind of gotten tired of listening to players saying, oh, woe is me, I'm not playing, and get their parents to start screaming at you. There's a few things as a coach that you can do to kind of, neg kind of negate that from happening, but the number one thing is to communicate to your team, hey, there's going to be competition. If you're number 12 or 14, and you're not playing, and you want to play, don't go complaining about it, because that's going to bring you absolutely nothing. What you need to do is to show me on the court that you're hustling. Because if you're hustling, that means that you're getting in better shape for one. You're all learning a lot more for two. But also, you're going to be playing more. And then, if you really don't like your playing time, come to me and talk to me. And say, what can I improve to become better? Because when they come out, go out into the world, they can't go to the boss and say... Oh, I'm not getting enough time. I'm not you're not working me enough. I'm not I'm not working enough. Cuz the the manager's going to look at them and say, "So, you haven't sold anything this month." So, bringing accountability is number 1. But going back to the whole idea of running a shorter team. Running a shorter team gives you some advantage advantages, like I was saying the full court press. But also, on offense, run a five-out offense. Run simple five-out offense plays so that now you're cutting towards the rim. Let me show you a few really quickly right now. So, of course, we all know the simple pass and screen, pass and cut, and pass and screen away. Those are simple five-out plays. And you can teach those plays at first. And so just a quick 10-second refresher. If you pass the ball and you cut, that means player four fills, player three fills, and player one pops out. When player one was cutting towards the rim, you better hit him up if he's open because he's going to be going in for the layup. Now, if the other team is running a 2-3 zone, what's going to happen in a 2-3 zone is now you're creating, with a 5-out, lots of spaces for you at to attack. You're spacing out the zone, which creates weak points, and that's what you want. 
if you're running against a team who's taller and the, you're faster, they are going to be running a 2-3 zone. If they're running a man-to-man -man offense, or sorry, if they're running a man-to-man -man defense, you're still going to be able to run a 5-out and you're going to be able to outrun them. Because if they're running a, let's just match up these players randomly, it doesn't really matter at this point in time. If you're faster than the other team, let's say player 5 passes to player 4 in this offense, he's going to cut towards the rim and because he's shorter and he's faster, he's going to get ahead of player 2 and that's going to be an easy layup every single time. And if player 5 comes out to play help defense, that's going to be a kick, swing, 3. Or kick, swing, drive, which is going to be now bringing in player 5, red, who's going to be then passing over to player 5 for the layup. Simple, simple offense. This is, this is exactly how you can beat a slower, bigger team with a shorter team. But going back to the whole idea... They're going to be running most likely, and if they don't at, at first, they're going to be later on running a 2-3. So, when that happens, again, pass. Obviously, screen away is not going to be working because it's a zone defense, but passing and screening 4 does work because now you're screening that player. Player 4 is rolling down the middle of the key. This is going to collapse the defense. Now we have a three-point shot or a baseline drive, baseline cut, whatever. And now we're going to be having multiple different options there. So you need to run drills that are going to help your team read the defense and react. And I've got tons of those drills on this channel. You just kind of have to search for it. And if I remember, I'm going to be linking them down below as well. If you can't find them, just comment and be like, yo... Send me some videos and I will send you the links to them. But these are some strategies and simple strategies that you can use to beat taller, slower teams if you have a shorter team. And then, on top of that, here's one really quick, adv more advanced 5-out offense play that you can run if you've got an older team that's short and really quick. So in this 5-0 this play, we're going to have player 5 passing up to player 1. If player 1 already had the ball when they were dribbling up, we want player 5 to get the ball first so he can get bring the defense out to him and then we can pass up top. What we're going to do is have player 5, he's going to be screening down for player 2. Player 2 red is going to be moving back up because obviously this is his zone. And from there, we're going to be having player 2 not popping up towards this corner because that's going to be having player 2 picking off that pass. What I personally want is player 2 to cut towards the middle because now he is going to be open in the middle. That's going to be drawing player 5 up. Player 5 blue is going to be rolling towards the basket. And look at that, a very simple layup. And we got it in the low post. Isn't that beautiful? We got it in the low post against a taller team. And that's how you do it. Now, if they come down and play defense, if player 5 is able to recover, whatever it may be, we can kick it out for a 3 or a mid-range shot. If they recover, we can swing, whatever it may be. If they swing, if like whatever it may be, and then we can just pop back out and run our run our five out offense. But we can run quick set plays against a zone and that's that are in a five out offense that can help you score even in the low post. And that's just by simply and very easily being able to manipulate the zone because now you've stretched it out so far because you're running a five out, you can create open spots like that. So that's just some strategies that you can run as a shorter team so that you can win more games. Now, on the defensive side in the half court, there's a few things that you could run. So of course you could go man to man, but if the other team has a very tall center and you let's say you've got you're in grade 8, you've got a 6'4 center on the other side and your center is 5 foot 10, Guess what's going to happen? That tall guy is most likely going to be scoring an absolute ton against your team. However, there's some strategies on the defensive side that you can use and you can teach your centers or your bigger, stronger players to be able to battle with those tall giants in the low post. And that is by not allowing that tall guy to get position in the low block. Have him pushed out as far as possible. That's one. 
There's also being able to front the defensive player, which means that your defensive player goes in front of their taller player. So now they need to do a lob pass over the defender to him, which in theory seems very simple. However, let me show you on the clipboard what this looks like because there's a lot of NBA teams, Kyle Lowry being one of them, who is extremely good at doing this. So let's say we have player 1 pass over to player 2 and we're going to have player 2 pass down to player 5. That seems very simple. However, if we have player 5 red fronting player 5 blue, trying to push him down farther deeper, and then player 2 needs to lob it over player 5 red to get it to his teammate. What I want is player 4 red over here to drop down so that this law pass is going to make it hard. It's going to make the law pass extremely hard. So that when that happens, we automatically have a double team with player 4 with his hand straight up and player 5 with his hand straight up. It's going to now disallow player 5 blue from turning around and taking a shot. And if it does, it's going to be contested. We will now have, because player 4 is doubling player 5 blue, we need to have player 3 drop down towards the low block. And the reason for that is because if he doesn't, that's going to allow player 4 blue to cut back door, simple pass, and layup. So we definitely need player 3 red to drop down. Or if they had two post players and player 4 dropped off, we now need player 3 to drop down to front player 4. And we need player 1 to drop down so that he's in the passing lane for both player 1 and player 3. And with these strategies, you can beat taller teams even if you have a shorter team. There's also confidence as well. Confidence is huge. You can't be having a short team going in saying, oh man, we're short, look at them. There's like, because I've, I've been in games as a player like that. I've played on some teams where our tallest guy is six foot four in like high school. And we're looking at other teams saying, oh crap, they got like, they got six foot six and taller guys from the shooting guard and deeper. That's going to be fun. We've had games like that, and um, we, we can still win those games. You just have to have confidence. You can't be sitting there and being like, oh, we're short. You need to be coming in and saying, oh, man, they're tall, but they're, they're going to be so slow, and they're going to be dribbling the ball, and when they're dribbling, it's the same height as us, so we can steal the ball. So we're going to be destroying this team. There you go. That's how your team has to think. If your team goes in confident for every single game, you're going to get at least an extra 5 to 10 points out of them. Anyways, I hope that you have enjoyed today's video. If you have, hit that like button, subscribe, and of course, I will see you guys again later on today for the second video of the day.